returns are fun for Halloween. We know that, but no one wants to look like one. No, officially that is the word, but no one wants to look like a jack-o'-lantern. But if you eat enough candy, bad things can happen. So the official doctor, the dentist rather, for the uh, Pistons, Dr. Robert DePilla, is here to talk about protecting our kids' teeth during this candy-filled holiday. Well, well, thank you. This is Good great. To to, great to be here on, on the eve of uh, Halloween. I mean, we have been eating you, candy up until you, this point, and probably will continue that's after. True. That's so right. this is your busy time. Yeah, of year. This is my busy time <laughs> of year. So just a little caveat, you know, before I, I came here, my, my kids were saying, um, "Where are you going with that candy?" And you better bring it back. Yeah, right. I said, "Don't worry, I'm doing a segment. They've we'll definitely will bring it back. They know oh, they how have. many they, they already, they already know." Okay. So what I did today, I just kind of, kind of divided up into a couple categories. Number one is the high impact sugar. The, we call the anti-dentate of, of candies, the candy corn. Mm. And then we go into the middle of the road, which is kind of conventional right now, what everyone loves. Now into the alternatives. Kind of like the, the darker chocolate, the more natural flavors. And now the new wave is giving out toys. Mm. Uh, toys. Toys. But the, yeah, know. that's going to be know. tough for kids like to convince them that they are going to want some you know, cheddar bunnies. Believe it or not, believe it or not, I did, I did an experiment okay. at, at I the did. house. I have a two and a half year old and I also have a five year old and also my, my girls are 11. So what I did is I just I put some candy in here okay. and I put some toys in there. Guess what? They grabbed the toy. They grabbed the toy. Wow. So, that might be a good thing. unconventional experiment, but it did work. So we a have bit. two Gen Xers up here. Going, we <laughs> That's crazy. No one's going to want to. We always try to toy. avoid the house with the apples. Exactly. And right. the pennies. <laughs> it, it was, it was funny because last night I was at the um, Bloomfield Library and I was surprised. It was very well attended mm -hmm. and they had a lot of games for kids. So you see, there's a trend as far as right. going to something that's a little bit more of a safer community, uh, a school, or also a public library. So what are you urging people to do? To give out alternatives then? So no, I. I think it's. I think it's within. Nice within mix. I think it's within your family because okay. I'll, I'll give you an example. My two and a half year old has a food allergy, so we have to be mm -hmm. real careful. He has an egg allergy, so we have to be kind of careful what to give him or give not. Some um, people have dye allergies, so you have to be aware of that. Sure. Sometimes you have to give out different products, such as some toys or some old alternative candies. So let's talk about what happens when, let's say, the uh, the cheddar bunnies from Annie's and the toys aren't a hit, and at, at, at someone's household, and they grab a bunch of candy. They come home with it. It, and you want to figure out a way to get rid of that candy. What are some ways per to Perfect do that? point. Let's go back to the American Heart Association. They recommend a hundred to 150 calories per day of sugar, mm -hmm. okay? One gram of sugar is four calories. So a couple of your favorite, as you know, the Twix. <laughs> you have a couple of these just like that. That's your da daily allowance of sugar. So that's about 25 grams uh, right over here. So th the main thing is moderation. Okay. Moderation, moderation, moderation. And what's the switch switch all about? Well, with, what's great, let's say you have an abundance full of candy and you kind of rationalize within the kids and there's great programs out there is to kind of give the candy away. Yeah. You can go to your local dentist, they'll probably take it, your fire department, police department, and also give it to people who, who didn't really support um, Halloween. In fact, our dentist, my daughter's dentist, I just got an email that said if you take the candy in, they'll give you gift cards. Exactly. Um, depending on your age and what you may like. So there is a huge incentive and trend it really out is. there right now. It really is. And then I, I always get the other question is about, you know, should we brush right after we have the candy? Good question. And then, you know, the important thing is that's what we were taught. You know, as soon as you have a sugary snack, you might as well brush immediate. Guess what? 30 minutes after. Why? Because your saliva will help buffer Mm. The nu neutralize the acids that's in your that's mouth. New that's great that's, right that's very that's a, that's a great, breaking that's a great news point. on the dentist front. Uh, <laughs> at Dr. DePilla's house, uh, are you uh, are you super strict? Like when your kids come home tomorrow, are you going to be like going through their candy and doing the switch thing where you go no, get? I, I, buy, I buy all the candy at Costco, the big ones. <laughs> oh, good for you. Good for you. <laughs> but in moderation, right? In moderation. Like and then the moderation. travel toothpaste stuff. Uh, there you go. Tubes, exactly. I'm and not the guy who's going to hand out apples and toothbrushes. I'm glad that guy. You seem like a fun guy. Oh, gosh. Well, thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank you and happy uh, Halloween. And right here, Derek, if you had to pick between a Snickers or some Cheddar Bunnies, which one would you go for? The Snickers. Oh, <laughs> <laughs>